So good morning everybody. So welcome to the This Morning Coaching Seminar. So our speaker today is Omar Leon Sanchez from University of Manchester and he will speak about differentially large fields. That's right. All right. Well, first of all, thanks to Alexei, thanks to Ronnie and in general all the organizers of the seminar. Uh, it's very, very nice to be back. I was talking to Phil is that last time I was in New York was three years ago. There was a DART meeting. Uh, I think it was oh, here in the Graduate yeah, Center. Yeah. I think uh, that was the last was time. Three I was years? Here. Hmm? Yes, yes, 2016. It was October, <laughs> no, October 2016. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's been three years. So it's really nice, really nice to be back. Uh, so, the things that I want to talk about, I think I'm very happy to, to come here, down here, because I think the subject is really, really fits really nicely with it, the seminar. Okay? And I hope, I hope people really do get interested. I am excited about these things, so I want to convey some of my excitement on this topic, okay? And also, I feel like, I feel like there's, just, there's a lot to do. Uh, it's kind of a new project that uh, several people are sort of involved, so Marcus Dressel, Anon Pile, and some of the people are also getting interested in these things. So I'll try to explain why are we interested, how this all started, and the things that we envision on doing, okay? Um, okay, so I think it's taking a right? It's fine. Sure. Some of them are squeaky, so I hope any chop is fine. Yeah, and this seems like a very fancy chop. Kevin has a here. Oh my God! I put that to limit your writing on the board. The the limit? Yeah, the limit is that. Oh, this is this is a, this is a, <laughs> as little as it gets. <laughs> okay, okay. We should start by saying that. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the general topic is this notion of differential large fields. And uh, the, the things I'm going to talk about is joint work with the Marcus Dressel. The joint with Marcus Dressel. And I will talk about, at, at the end of the talk, I will talk about some applications in PPV theory. And this last bit is joint work with uh, Anna Pillet. So uh, I know that Anna gave a talk in the seminar two weeks ago, where he he mentioned about well, differential large fields, right? Uh, and then he, he talked about how to use them to prove certain finiteness of some H1 group, right? Um, and then uh, he said that I was going to talk about the applications into the PPV theory. So, but most of the talk is going to be just giving the setup of what these are. So how, I want to try to motivate them explain why we feel like this is the parallel of what a large field is. So there's this, this notion of field theory called a large field, which has, 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 lot, has had lots of applications in several areas like number theory, the theory, um, uh, mainly due to pop, but several other people as well. Uh, try to explain why we feel this is the right differential analog of what a large field is, where you, you can do somehow like some uh, differential arithmetic or like rationality questions. Okay? Anyway, so that's uh, most of the talk. And then at the end, maybe 20 minutes, I'll take to explain how we can apply to PVB theory. Um, so, oh, so maybe motivation. Um, and I, I apologize uh, to people that uh, have not, uh, it's not, are not very familiar with PPV theory. Because I just want, I just want to the, the actual motivation, and then at the end of the talk, I'll try to remind people what these are. But just for now, motivation uh, given, right? A differential, uh, a differential field, say two differential, two differentials, right? Given this differential field, which lets us assume that it's real. Let's assume this is a formally real field. Field. Now you take a look at some linear differential equation with respect to the to the x derivative. Question is: Could you could you remind uh, what field is? Real field. Real field. Remind. Real field. So real field is just a field where negative one is not a sum of squares. In other words, maybe that's the way to say it. It's a field that you can basically order it. You can you can order it. You can put an order. It's an order field. So certainly real are, are, are 
are not algebraically closed, so the fields where you can put an order that is compatible with the field operations. Right? Okay, so that's a real field, real, real field, real differential. If you, you take a linear differential equation, this is a matrix over K. Okay, question, question, given real differential field and a linear, is there a PPD extension of K, which is real again? So basically, what I'm saying is that we're working inside a certain class of, of fields. So in this case, I'm working inside a class of real fields, right? And I'm equipping them with some differential derivations, right, some derivations. And I'm asking, well, consider the PPV theory inside this class of fields. Can we find, first of all, an extension, and furthermore, within the same class? So that's, that's, that's the general question, okay? Now, in the case of the, in the, case of the PV theory, right, PV theory, this was, uh, this was, I mean, it, it appears in a few papers, but I believe the first one was paper by um, Hi, Crespo, Haito, and Vanderput, I think it really appeared, okay? But now we're asking about the, the, the PPV case, so this is what the parameter is here, right? Is that, is that, so what, what's the answer for the PV case? PV case is yes. The PV case is yes. Oh, Amar, you don't do some, some like real cost constants or? Yeah, 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 sorry. Yeah, when I say yes, so the answer here, I should say, uh, the answer, so yeah, I should say, uh, under some assumptions, of course. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes sorry, 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 I didn't say that. So the answer is yes, sorry, sorry, William. The answer is yes under some assumptions. Sorry, I forgot, yes. So the answer is no, but the answer is yes under some assumptions. Which I will, this, this, this is the part that I will explain at the end, okay? But I just wanted to motivate, um, <laughs> because I should say, uh, okay, okay, yes. Because when you solve differential equation, I suppose you can take roots of some numbers. Yeah, 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 so we just solve this. So in general, if you were just, if you remove the real part, you can just ask, that. that's just a fair question, you can just ask that. Okay, and then under some assumptions, yes, there is. But then you ask, well, is that, is that extension within my class of fields? And then you need some other assumptions on there. Okay, uh, that was the motivation. Well, one of the motivations. Now, I want to talk about differentially large fields, uh, but first I'll talk about just large fields. Okay, so uh, the first thing is that I will write a box here. Uh, in, in this talk, for me, all my fields have characteristic zero. Now, it, it, for, 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 for large fields, a lot of it goes through in positive characteristic, but in the differential context, I want to restrict to the characteristic zero case, so I will just restrict to characteristic zero throughout the talk. Okay, so large fields. Now, large fields, they were introduced by Florian Paul, right? Who demonstrated by several papers that one can do very interesting mathematics. Just saying math. Math, math. Am I allowed to say maths? You see? Maths? No S, no maths. No? no? It's okay. Either way. Maths. In this class. In the class of large fields. In this class. Yes. <laughs> about mathematics uh, in this class, right? And because he had really, really nice applications to, for instance, Galois theory, right? So I, I would write down in a second. Maybe I'll write it. Yeah, I'll write it down in a second. Basically, the inverse problem, the, the usual Galois inverse problem, has a solution under certain things. So I'll explain that in a second. But also there are other applications into like Hilbert fields, extremal value problems, and elementary theory of function fields. Anyway, in lots of areas of mathematics, these sort of fields make an appearance, and things behave, what I would say, tamely. Tamely. Mm -hmm. okay. But I don't want to get too much into that, but that's the point. He, he wrote several papers, and other people also, like Kuhlman and other people have wrote several papers demonstrating this point. Okay. Very interesting mathematics going on. Okay? Okay, okay, okay. Definition, of course, I haven't even told you what the definition is, but to remind people, a field K is large 
if for every okay uh, irreducible for every irreducible algebraic curve over k if did I see algebraic curve C C okay if C has a smooth k one then it has infinitely many k points. Okay? So it's a condition that gives you a lot of points once you have a smooth one in any given irreducible curve. This is this is the definition as, a, as it appears in Pop's papers. And then in a second I will give equivalent, what I think more useful characterizations of this. Okay, but this, this is the definition. This is the definition. Okay? I will, I will give uh, other characterizations of this. Okay, examples. Now you might think, okay, this, this, this looks like a, maybe a, a definition which is seems maybe hard to achieve, right? But which fields which fields have this property? Is Q does Q have this property? No. Why not? Because uh, over Q you can take an elliptic curve, right? That have a smooth point and just have finite many Q rational points. This is like more the Morgan's theorem, right? So Morgan's theorem, you take a curve of genus two. So there are curves. You take a curve of genus two, right? You can find one which is smooth rational point, but by Morgan's theorem, it will have infinitely many cubes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it's you're using a big theorem of Mordell mm -hmm. to argue that the rationals don't have this property. <laughs> so in a way, it's actually harder to check that a field is not large. Okay. So the rational maybe I should start by by, by not examples, uh, non examples. So Q by models is curves of genus two, but in general there, there there is like a, or a number field for that matter or a number field yes exactly number field. Number field. and in the same spirit uh, so model theorem applied to number model theorem applied to number fields but there is like there is a, a functional version of, of model theorem so it also applies think of the form K T where K is any field these are also not large. Because there is again like a model version for function fields. You take the model version for function fields, you can find curves that all have this property. Okay? So number fields or function fields, they, they are just not there. Oh wait, sorry, here I'm assuming K is algebraic Okay. Uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. And it's also for Q. Q T is also not. And is there anything uh, between uh, the algebraic culture of Q and Q. That, uh, be, has a yes. be, be, between what and what? Between, between the algebraic closure of Q and Q. That has a yes answer. Oh, no, 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 no. it's a it's number fields. Right. Number fields are not. So Q large is, Q large is large. But if you take any finite, it means no, no, infinite. Oh, if you take if, if, if you take an infinite, infinite extension in Q large, I guess some of them might be large. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Q large is large. Any algebraic closed field is large. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm sure if you take, for instance, inside QAlge and you take the real closure of Q, that's also large. Right? Okay. So there are. Okay, so that's yes. But whether how many there are, I don't know how many, but there are. But if you take a finite one, then yes, the non example. Okay, examples. Any any algebraic closed field. Okay, so I will write I will write algebraically closed field. Any algebraically closed field. Any any real closed field as well. So yeah, real closed field. Um, also, what are called periodically closed. So for instance, to give even more <laughs> more special examples, complex numbers, real closed field. Real numbers, real closed field. Periodic numbers, periodically closed field. So these are examples of large fields. In general, any any complete complete field with respect to some with respect to some non-trivial with respect to some non-trivial absolute value. So completeness of an absolute value field will give you darkness. Uh, Hensilian, Hensilianity will also give you 
Maximilian, uh, Helsinian, with non-trivial valuations. So I'm not writing non-trivial, but non-trivial valuations. You see the embodied fields. So one of the most important examples that comes out from this completeness, completeness, is for any field K, you take Laurent series. It's large. So while, while KT is not large, if you take its completion with respect to the triadic valuation, it becomes, it becomes large. Okay? And this is kind of the main, one of the main examples of large fields. So you need K to be algebraically close? No, yeah. this is just in general. Any K? Yeah, in any K. And what about if you take an algebraic, uh, algebraic closed field and the subfield uh, so that the extension is finite? If you take an algebraic closed field and you take a soft field. So that the extension is finite. Oh, such so that the algebraic closed field is a finite extension. Yes. Sorry. Like smaller than R. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course, yes, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I, know. Um, I, I doubt it, I doubt it because, okay, I, I, don't, I don't have an example, but it's, there is an example, there is an example of a field which has a finite extension which is large, but oh, the field okay. itself is not. Okay. Oh, yeah. There is an example, so yeah. Yeah, a, a student of Pune came up with such an example, but I don't know if that actually will give well, you yeah, something. It's, it's, it's the same okay. Now, the, the, other, the other direction is true that if you take a large field and any finite extension, it remains large. Mm -hmm. any, actually, any algebraic extension will remain large. But there's some counterexample to that. Okay. okay, yeah? Okay, so this is a, and there are more examples. This is already a very rich family of fields, right? Uh, I should say here that this might pop up later, maybe not depending on time. Uh, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to explain it. I, I might if I have time, but you can put a P. Um, pack. Pseudo, pseudo algebraic closed fields. Pseudo algebraic. Okay. If you haven't seen it, and the same thing, I can put a P here. Pseudo real closed fields. If we have time, I will explain what these are. If you haven't seen it, forget about it. If you, you've seen it, these are other examples. Okay. It's just for people that have seen it. All right. So that's uh, examples. 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 Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Now, as I said, I want to talk about characterizations, right? Other, other, other ways to define them. So I leave this one here. I've been taking some uh, workshops on, on, on teaching, on teaching, and apparently, if I erase it slowly, and I give people like one minute, and it's really good for people to have a break and absorb what's going on. You don't have to divide your board in half. <laughs> they didn't tell me that. They didn't tell me that. No, they didn't tell me that. Anyway, so. But he didn't have, so he says he was right in the right. Who was, but he, he raised the same way. Right. Not like the, right. the first half. Oh, you mean like people sometimes raise this first half? Right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, no, no I'll, be, I'll be consistent. I'll be consistent. <laughs> okay, characterizations. Characterizations of, of flashness. Okay. So, well, K is large if and only if. Uh, number one, number one, uh, uh, for every uh, irreducible algebraic variety uh, v over k, so the prime over k, and irreducible over k, uh, if v has a smooth, smooth k point, then the, the conclusion in the case of a curve was that it had infinitely many. And in this case, you say then there is Sarisky many. There is Sarisky dense many. Then the k points are Sarisky dense. Okay, so there, there's infinitely many, but actually there's lots of them. Lots, lots, and lots. Lots of them. Uh, so this is this is just it's equivalent, but it's kind of in a way stronger. 
but it's something about override. It's not just curves. Two, uh, oh, maybe, okay, I'll, I'll say something here, and then I'll remind people what it means. E is existentially close. Essentially closed as fields in k double bracket t. Now I will just remind quickly people what this means. I think Anna actually gave the definition, but in any case, so a field k is existentially closed in an extension whenever, if I take an algebraic variety over k, which has a rational point here. It actually already has a point in here. Okay? So if you find solutions here, that will give you a solution here. Okay? And that's it? And that's it. So could you do the elliptic curve thing for the Q, how does how this breaks? Uh, oh yeah, so Q, Q, the rationals, the points that Q. Yeah, look at this, like how is this? Uh, it's not extensionally closed in. Yeah, so what, 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 yeah, what, what's, what, why is it not existential? Uh, well, um, for instance, here, because in an elliptic curve, right, you will be able to find, right? But why is this not essentially closed? Because, I mean, you, I'm sorry, you just for take, take an elliptic curve, right? And, so, mm -hmm. and suppose the elliptic curve, right, has maybe no rational points. Well, if it is, it will be large, right? Mm -hmm. According to this result. Yeah, so. It's not existentially closed. It's not. Sorry, sorry, yes, it's not. It's not. It's not essentially closed. So if you take an elliptic curve of genus two, even if he, if it has a non, even if it has a non-empty set of Q points, it will be finite set, right? Mm -hmm. But it will be have will have infinitely many of this. Okay. Could you give an uh, Could you give an example of equations? Oh. oh. <laughs> and with like one has a solution, but doesn't. I'm really bad at writing. I'm really bad. I mean, it would be something of degree five. But I'm really uh -huh. bad at writing these examples. And that's the easiest thing you, 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 know, you can think of uh, for. I can't, I can't remember the equation, but we, I mean, at the end of the talk, we can, we can Google the equations. Mm -hmm. and we can, <laughs> no, no, but if you Google the like, equations of uh, uh, Because if you give okay. some class of examples, is this the easiest thing to justify that Q is not existential close? Yeah, yeah. So as I said, you, can, you, can, you can write the the equations in xy, in xy of degree 5, right? Equations of xy degree 5. It has to be that complicated. Well, the, the, the curve has to be of genus two, so. Well, I think I. I yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't yeah, really I think, think of an example less than degree five. Right. Because it's you know this this is so so nicely looking. Q is not exactly, yeah. but but right. that, that is so complicated. Yeah. yeah, I didn't think I didn't really think if there's an easier way of doing this. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Right, so these these are two characterizations of uh, of, of, of lushness, okay? Characterizations of lushness. Okay. Um, now there's there's two theorems that I want to. I have theorem one and theorem two about about large fields. The first theorem is actually is is easy. It's kind of easy to prove if you use the right tools. Um, I mentioned before that. Every yeah, excuse me. Yes. When you
So so, the, so for example, such a large field will be just just take Q. This would be an example of, of such a field. Okay? A large field which is as intention as degree. Uh, for example, this for example. Now for that. So this is this is K. Then uh, G is a linear algebraic, oh sorry, I should say, it's a large differential field. Uh, uh, um, right, right, yeah, that's right. If G is a linear algebraic group defined over K, okay, then G is the Galois group of some PV, okay, PV extension of KT, maybe KX is better, with the, with the usual, with the usual DVX derivation. So, so, so this derivation is trivial on K and sends X to 1. And this, this is kind of an inverse Galois result, right? So you have these assumptions on K, which is large. You mean, you mean differential Galois group, I guess? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean the picard or yeah. differential Galois group. Differential Galois group of some PV extension of this differential field. Theorem. Here's a question. Here's a question. Uh, well, is there some sort of, first of all, is there some sort of analog? For the P, 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 P case. P, P, P case. Well, he, you could ask the following. You could ask the following. Uh, is, there, is there a notion of, and I will write the definition in a second, 
But is there a notion of differentially large, right, that replaces this one, right? Is there a notion of differentially large that replaces this one, such that, such that, and you also might want to have this infinite percentage degree assumption, but I'm just suggesting something, so I won't be very, I won't be very formal. And so such you don't that, have the answer to that. I don't have the answer to that. This is just a question that is actually, this is actually one of the mm -hmm. uh, leading questions that we have in our kind of a project around mm -hmm. differentially large fields. Mm -hmm. Is there a notion of the large such that every uh, linear and now differential? So in the, in the previous theorem, this was an algebraic group. Now I'm asking about any linear. Oh, by the way, so a differentially large, uh, and I would include here. What do I mean by that? I mean k with respect to my parametric. Right. So when I say differentially large. I don't mean k with the two derivations. I mean k okay. with the parametric one. People that know this PPV stuff. There is a differentially large with respect to the parametric one. So every linear, not, not write the actual derivation, dt, every linear dt group, dt algebraic group, and you will probably need this assumption. I will explain this assumption in a second. Linear algebraic group with a Holchin bands, funny to generate a subgroup, okay? For every linear delta T algebraic group having a Colchin dense funny to generate drop group is the is the double group of uh, PPV extension now. PPV extension, <laughs> where I'm thinking of what? Well, I need to, before before we equip Kx with this, so we can just do the same thing. So Kx, and now I take DDT. And now I take the delta T, which, I mean, again, this is, this is a, 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 something that we might want to show, so it's not that we have to do this, but I would say extend this such that it maps x to zero. <laughs> and they can build, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you put this to be zero, they will commit. Okay. So question. Yeah. And this assumption on the coaching denseness is because we know that differential Galois groups of PPB extensions over this field, they must have. They must, this is a this is a result of I think I think it's Dreyfus. I think it's Dreyfus. <coughs> Anyways, this is a question. We don't have an answer, but it's kind of leading us to say maybe maybe differentially largeness will say something around this. Just kind of in the similar spirit. Yeah? Is that more or less more or less clear? I think that we might be able to might be able to do that. Yes. There you have just derivation delta t, and over there you have delta x and delta t. Yeah, that's right. So here, I, I started with a, with, with a field with one, one derivative, one der and now I'm equipping this extension with the just dvt. Oh, with the, the, the classical one, the God one that given. maps this to 0 and this to 1. <laughs> derivation. Uh -huh. And then I'm saying that extend this to this, mapping x to 0. Do they commute? Yes, once you set this to be x to 0, they will commute. Yeah, if you just take an arbitrary extension, they might not. But if you make this one map in x to zero, they will commit. Yeah, so you, you would want the extension yeah, okay. to commit. You have to define. Okay. Yeah, yeah, define such a way they commute, and this is one way to do it. Yeah, this is something, something kind of up in the air of maybe this is possible, maybe you need some extra assumptions. Anyways, it's a leading question, something that leads to something. So I have until 11... 11, 13, including questions. OK. OK. So okay. And with additional hypotheses, do you have a result like that? Do, do we have anything? Oh, we, have, we haven't really. We have nothing around this, really. Yeah, yeah. So sorry, sorry. I should say, sorry, sorry. I should say that it's, it's, it's been when by, I think it was Michael, Michael Singer. That, yeah, I should, I should have said that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. If k. In this k, if we know that it's differentially closed with respect to the delta t, mm -hmm. then this is true. This is true. So in a way, it's sort of 
So if you, if you go back to this theorem, hmm. if you go back to this theorem, if these are the complex numbers, this is a theorem of Tretkov, I'm very bad with remembering numbers. I think it's Tretkov, uh, that if this is the complex numbers, then this was true, and this was true, I think, in the 80s or 90s. So the contribution, the, the new contribution is that now you replace the complex numbers for any large field of infinite tendency degree. So here, it's kind of a, in the same spirit, right? We know it's true for differentially closed. Well, can you relax that to differentially large? This, I think it's the of Michael Singer with somebody else that my partner I'm very sorry. So finally, general means just as a group. Yeah, 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 as a group. Finally, in the group, yeah. yeah. Uh, so definition. So a field, a differential field, is differentially large if two conditions hold. Me write that in. K is large as a field, field, and two. Uh -huh. If you have a differential field extension, which I will write like this. If you have a differential field extension, and K is existentially closed in field as fields, which I defined, I defined before, then K delta is existentially closed in this. And differential fields, and I'll, I'll try to write the pair to emphasize that here I mean as differential fields. Again, the definition is a, is a, is a similar one. Every differential variety over k that has an L point should already have a k. So it's, for, uh, so it's quantification for all L. Yes, yes, that's right. So for, for any, you want for any? Before if. What? For all L? For all L? For any extension? No, so k is fixed. L, L. L, yeah, L is for any L. All L, yeah. So for any, for any, <laughs> for any L, which is an extension, which is. <laughs> Extension closest fields, then this happens. <laughs> yes, so for any L, if, if, if you satisfy essential closure in the level of fields, then you will also satisfy in the level of uh, differential fields. Okay, so it's kind of a strong condition in a way. But what I'm trying to do for the next 20 minutes is kind of motivate or give other characterizations that resemble more to the ones that, that I had here for large fields, okay? Okay, good, 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 good. Is that, is that okay? Um, got it, so differentially large. And I have about, about several things about differential algebra, which I'm sure I can assume in this audience, because this talk talks for no differential algebra. Uh, but, but, okay, oh yeah, yeah, examples, of course, examples, so put Differentially closed fields are examples of this, because you can just use the definition right away, follow through the definition. The other examples, which are like um, the, the, the main interest for us right now, because we really want to study this class, I'll explain. This, this denotes closed ordered differential fields. It's a class of fields uh, that was introduced by Michael Singer in the 80s, I believe. Uh, what it means is that if you look inside the class of ordered differential fields, these guys are the ones that are existentially closed. Mm. So these ones are the ones that if there is a solution of something, in an order differential extension, it already has a solution downstairs, right? So it's like these are the existentially closed ones in all differential fields. These are the existentially closed ones in ordered differential fields, right? So it's just like a strict into the order class. Okay? Yeah, is that, is that okay? Do I, do I need to give you a bit more details here? Anyway, so this is like the analog, if you want, of algebraically closed, and this is the analog of real close fields, right? So this is the class that we're looking at, trying to see what things can you say over this field. There's a lot of real algebraic geometry. So how about 
differentially real algebraic geometry or something like that. Anyways, this is a really good example. Are, are they ordinary or partial? Uh, in, in, in the whole talk, I'm just taking ordinary things. Ah, okay. But, but, all of what I'm going to say, up to the end, I think, it works with several commuting derivations. This definition, certainly, mm -hmm. if you put yeah, several sure, commuting right. ones, it's the same definition. Right, right. And you can also talk about closed or differential fields in several mm -hmm. commuting derivations. And yeah, almost everything I'm going to say works for several commuting derivations. What, what happens uh, in the complete setting? You the completion of some. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, the completion in, in, in the sense of in the sense of fields. Completion in the sense of fields. To know if you so, I guess the question would be like, is that differentially large? So if you take a differential field and you complete it with respect to some valuation. So in general, I'm going to give an example that it's it's not it's not differentially large. I'm going to give an example of something which is not differentially large for an obvious reason, but at least in my example, it will be close to being differentially large. So such examples are close to being differentially large, but they're not. Okay, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So uh, this was a theorem, uh, right, right. Now, as I said, I want to give characterizations that look a bit similar to the ones for large. But, if, but to do that, I need to talk about something that I'm sure people have seen before, is, it's the, the jet or prolongation of a, of a differential variety. Okay, so definition. This is more of a chain of definitions. Um, so, uh, right. So just to, just to have the right setup, uh, I'm gonna let, I, I wanna have a, a universal differential field where my differential varieties are living inside. And the coaching says, universal differential field. So that you will be a universal. So in the universal. So everything is sort of living inside you. Okay, but you be universal. Now let delta R right, be the map. Okay, I'm gonna fix some n. So fix n. So fix fix n, a natural number. I'm gonna let and also R a natural number, n and R. R natural numbers. I'll let this map, R, be the map from un to un r to 1, which is just the derivatives. It's just the derivatives, that's it. So for any element, any tuple, so for any, step, for any tuple, this map is just a delta a. Well, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a I, I call it a Nabla map, but it's just a the a together with us, all its derivatives of the order r, that's it, nothing else. Now, given um, given a differential variety, say b, inside un, that's a differential variety inside un, I'm going to denote, this is not the standard notation, but I will use it anyways, get r of b to denote the Sarisky closure, Sarisky closure of the image of B under this number. So I take I take the points in B, I apply these derivatives, I get what I get is a coaching set that takes a risky closure. So this is a risky closed, of course. This is a, a risky a risky closed set. In in U and R to one. Okay, it's a risky closed set in U and R to one. So I started with the differential variety, and now I can build for any R this sequence of algebraic varieties. So I really get a chain, so finally a sequence of, 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 of algebraic varieties, which the whole family determines B. But these, all of these are algebraic varieties, right? Even when R is zero, it's still an algebraic variety. Okay, so now there's a variety. Okay. Now uh, I think that, I think that's I think that's all the, the, the notation I need to state the following theorem. 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 Um, so theorem with me and Marcus. Marcus Tressel. Um, K delta. 
is differentially large, if and only if, uh, maybe I can write, maybe I can write a following R2, because I want, I want to write two. <laughs> so the following are equivalent, zero, oh, uh, uh, so let's, let's suppose that let uh, k uh, 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 be large. So I'm going to assume that as a field is large, and now the following are equivalent, because remember the definition of differentially large includes largeness. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to assume largeness. So zero is that the differential field is differentially large. And this, the, the first condition, it's going to look like the largeness condition on smooth points on algebraic varieties implying many points. So it looks as follows. Um, right. For every irreducible differential variety v over k, uh -huh. if for all r, if for all r, if for all r, ouch, the jet has a smooth point, then the k points of, of B, right? This is this is a jet, an algebraic thing, algebraic object, and this is V, the differential object, has coaching. Coaching. Sorry, it's coaching, not has. Is coaching. So, is this, this characterizes differential? Can you can you replace for all R for all sufficiently large R? Yeah, you can replace for some, or, or, or just even infinitely many, okay. infinitely many R's. Um, yeah, yeah, because if you have for infinitely many, at some point it will become for all R's. Anyways, yeah, it does it does work. Um, um, so two things to note here is that if you notice this notion of smooth is the algebraic notion. Mm -hmm. We are not using any differential smooth. Uh, because we, we were trying to avoid that. Because, well, there are definitions of, of being a smooth point in the differential sense. There are a few out there, and I'm not sure there's some sort of convention of which one is the one. What do you mean smooth K point on a delta variety? No, this, this is not a delta. This is not a delta. This is an algebraic So this, oh. this jet, this jet, Oh, this is why we did this. The Zariski closure. That's right. You take the Zariski closure of a differential variety, so you get the Zariski closure. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this smooth refers to this algebraic mm -hmm. object. Okay? Uh, yeah, okay. 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 Uh, uh, I think that's it. What I wanted to say. Uh, right. So that's one. The second one, the second one which I find to be quite useful. Uh, it's as follows. It's, it's very similar to this one, but it's kind of in a more algebraic, algebraic context. But I think it's quite useful. I'll write it here. So instead of looking at the differential variety, I'm basically going to look at its differential coordinate ring. So if you want the translation from here to this, it's going to be looking at differential coordinate rings. Okay, so for Every, uh, for every, uh, uh, for every finitely generated differential domain, uh, let's call it A. This A is kind of the, the, the uh, coordinate ring of the differential variety. The finitely generated differential domain A, right, over K. Uh -huh. uh, if, if we can write A, as a tensor product, a tensor product with a finite generated k algebra, not differential, okay? So this is actually this is actually an algebra. And finite generated here means differential if finite generated. And finite generated here it means algebra finite generated. So if we can write this differential algebra as this tensor product with B of finite k algebra 
and p a polynomial, a polynomial algebra, so p is just polynomial algebra, it's just polynomials in some variables over k. Okay, then, and here's the, here's the statement, if a, sorry, if b, if, if there exists, if there exists a smooth, a smooth uh, k point, uh, which now points in here, and points in the level of algebra, I can write as b to k, right? This is, this is uh, so points correspond to algebra homomorphisms from b to k. Then there exists coaching. Coaching, coach, I'll, I'll write coaching dense. Many points, coaching dense, many, which again now points are. So, what's the difference between these two? These are algebraic, algebraic maps, these are algebraic maps, and these are differential. Okay. But it's really, it's really a, more or less a restatement of number one in the level of the coordinates. Anyways, I find the second one to be useful for the for the following for the following result. And it's really just restated things at the level of algebra in some sense. Now the one comment I can make here, the one comment I can make here is that if if you are familiar with characteristic sets of a of a of a prime differential ideal, but if you take a prime differential ideal and you take a characteristic set, this B is basically the algebra given by modding out the just just the characteristic set, say has order has order R. So you only look at differential polynomials up to order R, and that's where this B comes from. Okay? Anyways, anyways, it's just an extra comment. Okay, okay, okay. I'll do the so this is two. Oh, maybe I can write three there. Oh, well, but first I need to talk about something else. Um, so suppose that A, so this is our remark. Suppose that I have a differential field, right? Um, what are the possible? I mean, I don't want a list of possible, but I want to talk about the possible, at least two. Uh, possible derivations on, on the one series. Okay? Well, I want to talk about two of them. The first one is just K. And I want, would you clarify uh, quantifiers yes. for B and P? Yes, so for every differential algebra, that has this form. So then for every A, for every B and P. No, no. no for every A, no, which, B and which, B which, which you can give. Which you can write. So for every differential algebra, which has the form, which can be written. So how is B and P quantified? Uh, what there exists. It? There exists. There exists. So no, well, no, yeah. no, there exists. It's for, for every for, a and for all and for all every a such that there exists b, uh, b and p b and p with a equals b times p so for every a for which there exists these subalgebras then then the, then this whole, then this whole implication so the, what about differential the structure on B and P? No, no, there is no, there's no, there's no different structure. Yeah, yeah. Just, they're, just, they're, they're just about to This is an algebra state. These are just yeah. algebra yeah. Yeah. Only, only A has a differential So that's a, as a set or as an algebra. This is not, as, an algebra. as an algebra. This tensor problem is as K algebra, not as a differential. Algebra. Algebra. Right. Yeah. Is, is it that clear that for every a? So we don't we don't know how differentiating an a looks like in b tends to p. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you don't know yeah. you can't differentiate b. If you differentiate yeah, right. b, you can you will end up in the tensor product. Right, but you so end up for in every that. algebra a for which there exists b and p with this property, then if there is a algebraic map. There's a and I'm confused. Sorry, you, you can always take uh, b to be equal to k, right? You can always, uh, 
Well, you're going to be, but then, 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 then A, what what then, then what A is going to be a pronominal adjective. I still talk about P. Okay, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something yeah. that's important here. Right. Yeah. So that's what I said, that the B is the one coming from the characteristic set. The so B. the B, basically, basically, the B has all the relevant differential information from A, because the rest of the information is just polynomial algebra. So this adds no algebraic information. All the information from A really sort of comes from B. This is why it's a characteristic set kind of thing. Would, wouldn't it really be for every A, B, and P such that A is the tensor product and B and C, B and P satisfy, satisfy those? Well, because, it's because, 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 because the way, the way it's written now, <coughs> same thing. Um, same thing. Ah, right. The way, well, the way it's written now, oh, yeah. you're, you're saying that given this A, there might be only one particular B and P, oh. but couldn't technically write A in two different... Well, I'm, I'm not saying that every A can in this form, right? I'm saying... No, I, I realize that. I realize that, yeah. So I think this is the right way. So let, let me name... So this thing, this, big, this big thing is bracket. This is a star. Mm -hmm. This is a star. Well, actually, you don't have... You, you can put that there uh, because so smooth point as part of the other hypothesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? I could put it as part of the uh, hypothesis. Uh, and then so, just so, that. So when you go universal and all the search quantifiers yes. and implication, you're supposed to put parentheses because they don't... Yeah. So I'm trying to put parentheses here. So this is for all a, right? Yeah, you can say for all a, for b, all and a. p, such that all that happens. Then there exists b, b and then there is. Yeah. Then star. That condition holds. But that condition depends on b. So you're supposed to take a quantifier for b out. You cannot put no, 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 this no. b and p inside of this because b b is also used. Oh, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. You're supposed to select for all. For all. Then for all. When you take it out, you put for well, all. Well, you, you can also simply just say for all B and P. Yes. Yeah. All right? Yes, for all B and P. For, for all B and P. For all. And then just let A oh, equal to that. That's all. So for all yeah. The difference for all A, B, and P, B, C, and P, with a delta. Yeah, that's right. For all A, B, and P. You write A that way, then. <laughs> for all A, B, for all A, B, P. For all A, B, P. Okay. If. AP, happens, all points bulleted. Sorry? No, never mind. This for is all ADP, <laughs> right, if this happens, then that happens. Is, that, is, is, it, is it now readable? Uh, yeah, this is important, it's readable. But yeah, for all ADP, if this happens, Sorry. then that happens. Yeah? But this yeah. is because also other words, and so it's just like the other thing. Which one? This one? No, the, the assumption, it also has other stuff. Oh, yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. Uh, for all BBFP, this and T, and. Let's call this uh, dagger, where dagger is this and this. Okay? Yes. Finally generated P also? Uh, no, 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 no. no. P. You could have infinite. P, P, P will not in general be because A, A as an algebra, as an algebra, A will probably infinite generated as an algebra. As a differential algebra, it is finite generated, but as an algebra, it will be infinite generated, in which case P will be infinitely many. So, so if A is happens to be a polynomial P, P and using B as K, the conclusion, well, the hypothesis yeah, is certain. Yeah. Right? yeah, the hypothesis is then, not. Then, uh, what what is the uh, what is saying that uh, A is dense? So, if, if, so, if P, so in that case, A would just be a differential polynomial, right? In that no, case, just polynomial. Just culture. Just polynomial. So you're saying that P. So if I let A equals P, that's what we're saying, right? A equals P. A equals P with the delta equal to... In that case, it would be, yeah. a, a, put it a would be differential polynomial. No, ah. because you, you, uh, if you would have it that... I mean, there are no, there are, if A was B, there are no differential a relations no differential in the generators of A. Yeah. Yeah. So if A was B, there are no differential it's relations in the generators. Small. Right. So A would be a differential okay, polynomial. Yeah. Right. Finite generated. Right. Yeah. I don't think so I, it doesn't make any sense, you're saying? No, no it does or, or make sense. Dense? It does make sense, but what is it saying now? Yeah. There exists a Colchin dense A where? There's no there's there's the map. Colchin there dense many map. Coaching there dense many maps. The excuses is for the map. Coaching dense many maps. 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 So there, there's a lot the of map. maps. There's yeah. a lot of maps. Mm -hmm. A lot of differential maps. This is like there's a lot of differential maps. Like coaching dense. It's a maps. point in the variety. Yeah, this is a point. This is like a this is like a differential K point. You should you should think of this as a differential variety. And this is you think that it's a differential variety. V of A. 
So if you're yeah, both, yeah, it's, 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 it's like point of variety, differential variety, yeah, right, more the prime, or more the prime, 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 so A is a the, the coordinate ring. Coordinate ring of a differential variety. Right. Let's say uh -huh. yeah. it would be. Yeah. Yeah, 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 then, yeah it would be. It yeah. always would be. And then what do you mean by Colchin dense? If, I mean a? That if I look if I look at the K points of the differential variety, oh, then this is there's this is no Colchin differential thing. variety in this. It, it's, a is a you should, you should think of A. Yeah, but I should they, also write it. <laughs> no, but it's no, but I mean this is this is just this is just a translation. To the algebraic setup, from the geometric setup to the algebraic it's setup. It's just dual, 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 right. dual, dual, dual statement. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a saying same amount. It's like saying a point. So yeah. Anyways, there are, there are different ways of saying this, but um, no, I still don't understand what a Colchin dense. You should just think of this. Do you take the k map points is. of b? It's not Colchin dense map. No, 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 it's, no, it's not map. No, it's no, they all are. Map is, <laughs> is, a map is considered the point. It's a point. It's a differential point. So he's saying that if you take a map is a differential point. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A homomorphism. So like for an algebra, like regular algebraic geometry, your points correspond to homomorphisms from the coordinate ring into the field. Right. So. Maybe I'm going to hear that. So these are. A k. Oh, I think these are k. K point. K point. K point. K point. The same as a map. So you have a Colchin dense set of k points. From the coordinate ring to k. Yes. Right. Right. This is the same thing. But the reason, I guess, he did it that way because he wanted to use tensor product. Yes, so. yes, I want to use tensor product. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. And this, this sometimes changing the language makes things a bit difficult to grasp. Uh, but I guess, I guess, uh, I guess so when you say there is this dense, you mean the 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 k points is dense. Yeah, I mean okay. the k the k points in the dense. And the, the, points the, points and and the uh, variety B. with coordinate ring A. Yes. Which is not written here at all. No, because, no, because, because that's still, dual state. So the fact that every this is, finitely this is, is more general. It's assumption. Yeah. So, so assumption what do you mean by culture dense in B? No, no. So B? this assumption, if you look at the assumption, gives you that it's going to be a coordinate ring. It doesn't yeah, say right. coordinate ring. No, in no, B. Wow. But, but the B is dual state. You might want this in an article refereed by me. The B is harmless. No, it's given the statement in terms of variety on the first line. I understand. Yes. I actually had this uh, similar kind of question. Did your referee understand the, the statement? <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they didn't complain about this. They did not raise Maybe they didn't it. read it. Ah, okay. Maybe they didn't read it. Yeah, 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 exactly. I know, Which I, is the main I, statement. I can't, I can't guarantee it. I can't guarantee it. I mean, in any case, in any case uh, right, this sorry. is one way to think about it, but even if you haven't seen the previous one, this, this just makes sense at the level right. of algebra. So right. maybe, maybe you give... Um, so, so, so if, if you have a coordinate ring, right? Yeah, here's I mean, let's say A is a coordinate ring. ring. Yes. Then how is A written as B tensor P? If A, okay, okay, right. So I, I would write it in a second. In lots just, of ways. Just let me change this. Maybe, maybe really? There will be no, let me write it in a second. No, P is just polynomial algebra. Oh, oh, did not find any generator. I will, no, ah, that's right. No, 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 it's not. It's not. Ah, no, okay, that, okay. Well, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. It's fine? Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. That's fine, that's fine. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay, yeah. Sure. okay. Yeah. okay. okay. Uh, I will maybe change this. Let me change this to the following. Uh, this is equivalent that K is, is existentially closed as differential fields. Then the differential field is existentially closed as I defined before in A. It's the same thing. So if you, wow. if you don't like this, uh, this coaching density stuff, oh, okay. you can no, just say I don't that. like that. I don't Great. see that in any literature ever. <laughs> Which one? This one or that the other the one? The field is a existentially closed in, in a. This is a domain, right? This is a domain. I thought so the topology was on the solution of space. No, no, no. So no. A, 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 a is a k-algebra. A is a differential. Yeah, yeah. So, right. yeah. But the existentially so, closed contains a reduction to the Colchin dense set. Yeah. That's what yeah. you do. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you can look at it in, yeah. the, in, the, um, in the theory of uh, differential domains. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 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 In right. the sense uh, of differential did you want to see well, well, We don't have a or, quotient or topology or on the set of differential the domains. Is it the same? You can set domains, you can just see the quotient field. Because like, like, it's essentially solutions and integers and, or. You have to define that. Uh, You'll be not, able to no, no, no. no. define that. If I have a field, oh, well, I have yeah, a, a, a domain extending the field, it's a feature that you understand. You now have to understand what it means. Right. In differential algebra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What I mean is like it's just defined the same way that for every uh, yeah. for every differential that's variety right. over k, right. if it has a solution in the domain, it has a solution in k. Right. That's right. Is it, would it be the same as to say quotient? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, you can no, use no, the quotient no, no, no. field. No, no, I mean, I mean, no, that's right. That's, yeah, it's different, but I meant it's like different. it's the same. You say the same thing. You say for every differential variety over k <laughs> has a point in the domain, yeah, it but it's not the same as changing the domain for the quotient. Right. Okay, really? So. Yeah, no, I don't think it's the same because it does. Ah, you, 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 may, you may have solution in yeah, the Russian field. And then yeah, it's, not it's, it's, a, it's a stronger right, to say right, you have right, solution in right, the right, field. Right, right. But I mean, like, the, yeah. the phrasing of the definition is the same. Definition okay. is the same. Okay. That's what I mean. So, the, I mean, the theory is different, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. The theory is different. Okay, okay. So, that's what I want to do. So, I'll, I'll just skip a few things because of time. Um, just five minutes left for the talk and ask questions. Okay. So I'll, I'll just uh, conclude with the following then, uh, um, right? Okay, so I just want to put this, this, and there's also, which I will write this, and um, by this, what do I mean by this? I have a derivation delta on K, right? Then this means, ex oh sorry, I didn't write the T here. <laughs> I mean extend it, extend it to here, sending T to one. Like t to one. It, it, in k, it acts as delta, mm -hmm. and it must t to one, and there exists such a derivation. I won't say. I won't say more. There is. There is such a derivation. Okay. So these are the two ones that I, I, I care about. So now I, I want, now I want to continue the theorem. So number three. <coughs> Wait, you want to raise this? Number three. Uh, how how are the two different? Yeah. Oh, the, okay. this one is zero on k. Okay. This one is zero on k. This is yes. a classical, yeah. classical. Oh, this one then extends the delta. Yeah. On k. This one extends delta. Oh, okay. This one is yeah. zero on k. All right. Are different. Okay. Three. Uh, so another characterization of largeness is that this differential field is existentially closed in k k Laurent series with respect to the second, the second one here. It's existentially close. Okay. <coughs> okay. So we have that. Now uh, I'm just gonna say quickly that this this uh, this result. That's the third condition. Yeah. That's the third one, right? Yeah. This this third condition it depends on one thing, which I will state it quickly. That. Um, Sorry, so let me just state it. Uh, we are realizing the following theorem. Okay? Um, suppose S is a, 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 is, is a, a differential algebra, differential K algebra, differential K algebra, so it's a differential K algebra, here. Um, if there exists again a domain, a differential algebra which is a domain, if there exists an algebraic map from S to K, if there is an algebraic a K, K algebra, a K algebra, a K algebra homomorphism, not differential, mm -hmm. not differential, K algebra homomorphism, then there exists a differential K algebra. Extension. Homomorphism from S, I'm going to put the delta just because it's important, mm -hmm. to K. Oh, okay. So it, it, this, this theorem says that if I have some extending, 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 extending what? They exist. They're, no, they're, 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 no, no, no. They're, they're, if there exists a map here, oh, there exists a map here, not extending. But not necessarily, just no. the direction of the map. No. And this, this second map, oh, okay. this second map, we call it the twisted Taylor morphism. Because if you've ever seen, if you've ever seen a Taylor morphism, 
this is more or less what the polymorphism is doing. It's, it's mapping a morphism of algebra to morphism of differential rings, but twisted because the telomorphism does not give you a differential key algebra, it just doesn't. So we, we prove that you can twist it to get this. What is this saying in the level of points, in the level of differential varieties? If I have a differential variety such that this jet space have algebraic A points, I can this construct it. This map, yeah. 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 If, you, if you give me a map, I can construct this map. Right. It's very easy and, to construct. But this doesn't extend. It doesn't extend. No, 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 no. It's not an extension of the map. It's not an extension. No, it's, going, it's, going, it's going from the same set. It's going from the same set. Ah, right, right, from right, right, same set, right. The same yeah. set. Right, right, right. But yeah, it's very so stick construct. So it has to be just... I don't want to write it, I don't have time, but it's very stick construct. Anyways, this is what you use to prove number three. Well, you from algebraic points, you produce differential points. But the twisted tandem morphism doesn't require that the points on the jet space be compatible in any way? Now the points in the jet space be compatible? Well, you do require, so maybe, maybe I'm missing something here that... Uh, no, 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 it doesn't. It really doesn't. No, no, no. As long as you can build, so notice this, this French, this, this K algebra goes all the way from S. Yeah, all the way, right, yeah. right, right. So, uh, okay, so this is all. So now, I want to finish with, there's two, two theorems. I'm going to finish, sorry, sorry Alexei. I want to finish with two theorems. This is the end of the talk. Uh, this, is, this is another theorem. I want to finish with two theorems. The first theorem, and I'm going to chalk. First theorem, this theorem says that, um, right, take any, <clears throat> any differential field, it doesn't matter, take any differential field, and now I start doing the following construction. I take K and I add T1. Okay? Now, as I said before, this is not differentially large. This is not differentially large, okay? Even though it's like a completion, but it's not differentially large because you cannot solve things of this form. And T1 is... T1 is some, yeah, some, some, yeah, some yeah, variable. Right, right. Some actually variable. Yeah. Oh, oh, very, oh, variable. Oh, right. Variable. Such that... The, <laughs> you can't have a lot. The derivation here is the one that previously I called the delta T1. So it's the one that extends delta right. and masks T1 right. to 1. And now, repeat it. add another variable and just extend it again so that the derivation maps this to one. Now repeat it. And we're gonna build F to be the union of this chain. Okay, just gonna build this union. This is a differential field because I'm extending derivations every time so I'm just gonna call it like this. It's a differential field. It's gonna keep extending. Theorem says that if you take this, this is differential large. This is differential large. Part two, part two, if I take algebraic closure, algebraic closure of that, and extend the delta to the algebraic closure, it is differentially closed. So this is giving me examples. Differentially large fields and also differentially closed fields. Okay, by taking this union of chains, and if I take algebraic closure, I get differentially closed. That's it's, it's a, it's a yes. Yeah, it's a theorem. So example. You have something is, is so k is not large. No, k is just any any differential field. There is no assumption. It will become large mm -hmm. after yeah. the first iteration. Mm -hmm. But um, anyways, yeah. second yeah. theorem. I'm gonna finish with it. So this theorem is this theorem is uh, it's, it's, it's a still to appear. We haven't we haven't finished. We have a draft. But so Marcus and I are writing this paper that contains this result. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to construct differentially large fields. Now the following theorem is, I'm just going to state it. Uh, 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 this is a result with Anand. So but each, each step here uh -huh. is uh, large with respect to the next one, is that correct? So uh, yeah, so uh, uh, let me just say that here that this, this, so let's just take the first step, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. This is not this is not differentially it's large. Okay. Yeah, but it's large. However, it is large. It's However, larger than the next one, yeah. It is large. And uh, it is, I'm going to say, put it in quotes, it is differentially large 
after the order. If we, no, no, not that. If we look only at equations over k. So if you look at equations involving kt1, it's not differentially large. But if you only look at equations over k, then this has solutions for everything that should have solutions. So it's close to being differentially large if you look at things over k. Okay? But it's not if this is this is the reason why this yeah, inductive construction works out. Exactly. 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 So you, you can probably see why it works. Theorem is uh, um, is I'm just go back going back to the to, to my first motivation because I want to close I want to close the talk with this. If um, if I have so remember the first question. If I have a field in two derivations, I'm gonna talk about this PPV stuff. If this happens, and some assumptions here that k, uh, the, 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 if I take the delta x constants of k with respect to the delta t derivation, mm -hmm. if this is existentially close in k delta t, so, okay, as if, as if as delta t fields, right, existentially close to delta t fields, this is the assumption, I have a differential field to derivations. If this is extensionally closed here, if the field, if this field of constants with respect to delta t is differentially large, okay, differentially large with respect to the definition I just gave, and this is differentially large, and, 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 and k is bounded, as a field, which uh, if you were in Anand's talk, this means that there is finitely many extensions of degree n for each n as a dimension. So you have three assumptions, right? This existentially close assumption, this differentially large assumption, and this bounded assumption. Then every every linear uh, linear differential equation, so just like I wrote it before. Delta x y three y has a p p extension, let's say L, where the these constants with respect to t are also existentially closed in this PP extension. Okay, and now what does it imply? Well, you can take the case. Maybe I'll write here as in this box as a special case. Special case where K is a real field and the, these constants, suppose that these constants with respect to delta T are this example that I talked about before. Close ordered differential fields. Okay? So let's, let's assume that. Let's assume that you have a, a real field, so order field, such that the delta x constants with respect to delta t are a closed order differential field. Then you get this for free, okay? You get this for free, and you get this for free. So you get all the assumptions, and therefore you get this, which implies that this L is real. Okay, so the existentially close in L, in case of real fields, implies that you actually get what I stated at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. If you're working inside the class of real fields, under, under this assumption, this is the extra assumption that I, I said, like under some assumptions, under some assumptions. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the under some assumption. Then you get a PPV extension, which is real, okay? So sorry that I rushed at the end. Uh, I wanted to close with the Begin the, the first question at the beginning, but that, I'll stop now. Yeah, sorry. So, do we have any more questions? Uh, some of the the equivalences here are they are they simply just unwinding definitions or what? Oh, uh, I mean, some implications are shared only right away, uh, and certainly so from from one to two, from one to two. It, it, it only, as I said, it looks very similar because you can think of this A as, as the coordinate ring right, of right, B, right? Right, right? But the thing to do is, for, is for example, suppose that you start in number one. 
Suppose that you start with the assumption that you have a differential variety mm -hmm. satisfying the smoothness points there, right. and you want to get this. Okay. Right. But what you have to do is translate it. You have to translate it mm -hmm. to the algebraic context. Okay. Right. So if you and maybe this will answer to this question. Hopefully, <laughs> this question. Let's say you start with B. Okay. So I'll erase. I'll erase. So you're, you're trying to show the. Let's say y two imply one. Uh, y one implies two. Oh, one implied two. Oh, sorry, no, no. no oh, sorry, two implied one. Two implied one, right? Two implied one. I'll erase this. So I'm just going to use sketch. So why does two implied one? Okay, why does two implied one? Well, you take you take your V, which is a variety, yeah. shows that the jets has a smooth right. K point, and I want to produce a coaching jets point. Right. Well, I want to translate this to my algebra. Right. To my algebra. So you take jets. Okay, so you say let. I'm going to call it A bar for now because I'm going to make a, a, right. a, a tweak. A bar will be my uh, my coordinate ring. Mm -hmm. So this this P is the differential prime ideal mm -hmm. associated to P. P right. This is my A. Mm -hmm. And now, if I'm able to write A in this form, then I'm good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can I do this? Well, you take a characteristic set of P. Take a characteristic set of P. You take a characteristic P. Characteristic set, you get this separate, separate, mm -hmm. this H, mm -hmm. this H, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to make this work, you have to localize. Mm -hmm. so, so, by I would say by characteristic sets, like or each, uh, by by general, by resource of several of the coaching, I guess characteristic sets. Mm -hmm. By characteristic sets, there is this H mm -hmm. differential this, this H differential polynomial. Differential polynomial, and I'm going to actually quotient now by p. So it's, it's, it's a differential polynomial which I'm going to quotient by yeah. p, mm -hmm. such that a twiddle localized, mm -hmm. localized at h, mm -hmm. now becomes isomorphic to this b mm -hmm. localized at h tensor p. I'll erase. I'll erase. Oh, you, don't, you don't have b yet, right? I don't have b. I need to say what b is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so erase. I'll erase this conclusion. So where, where B is, I take I take the polynomial ring mm -hmm. up to order, say R. I'm gonna say what R is in a that second. Covers all the edges. That where R is the order of the characteristic set. Right. So suppose you have a characteristic set, yeah. so the equations involved have order at most r. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to truncate. I'm going to truncate the differential polynomial ring at order r, and I'm going to mod out by this. I'm going to call it lambda. This is the usual notation for characteristic set. I'm going to mod out by lambda. Uh, oh, okay. uh, order here. Oh, okay. Or intersected with the second. With the right so I'm going to put an R here just to denote the, the, yeah. the yeah. mm -hmm. So this is a finitely generated algebra. Mm -hmm. Finitely generated algebra, okay? Then I localize it at H. This is still fine generated, okay? So now this is my A, and this is my B. And now I can apply condition two. So this is what I was saying before that this B comes from the characteristic set. And, and, and P is the what? P is the P. P, is P, P, P. P where P. Yeah, what is P? P is oh, the, the whole, the whole is differential the, ring. Is, oh. It's just as the, a polynomial it, ring. It's, right? it's the, the whole differential polynomial yeah, ring. Right. As a polynomial as ring. Yeah. Differential polynomials modded out by the, ah, first, by, the, by the first truncation. Ah, the tail end. Yeah, this is just a tail. The tail end. It's basically just a tail. Yeah. yeah. Modded out by, by, by the, okay. the, this truncation. So it's just, it's, when, I, when I said that, B really ah. contains all the algebraic information needed right, right, right. in A. Right, so, right. so A is given like this. So the information, sorry, this should be bracket. The, inform, the differential information in P is always contained in some sense some finite, in the characteristic finite, set. Right, right. So you do that. You, you just mod out by the characteristic set, which has order R. And the rest, you can just think of it as having no additional information. Mm -hmm. so it becomes a right, right. In infinitely many variables. Right, of course. Does that sort of explain? Yeah. No, okay, I can say it again. I can say it again. I don't know where, what is x and 
algebraic indeterminate family. Diffra differential. Yes. Yes. Differential. It's differ no. this differential, differential polynomial ring. Yes, yes. And yeah, you're yeah, modding yeah, out yeah. by a prime differential yeah. ideal. Yeah, that's that's right. So right. that defines V. That's right. So I start characteristic set. I what do you mean by modding out by a characteristic set? So I start with B. In a poly in a polynomial ring. Modding out just by the characteristic set? Or to order no, R. The, the ideal generated I by the I that quotient ideal up to order R, up to the order. So the characteristic set, right? Uh, if I take, okay, take lo R large enough. So yeah, 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 I think, I think R large enough. R, 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 R is the order. The other thing doesn't matter. The characteristic set. I mean, the other things are consequences. Yeah, so I take, I take the differential polynomial ring in n variables, mm -hmm. same. I mod out by P. This is my differential algebra. Yeah. Okay. Now B is I'm going to truncate the differential polynomial algebra up to order R, where R is large enough right. to contain the characteristic set. Now I'm going to take say you, you you can think this of this as the ideal, not differential, as the ideal generated by the characteristic set in the truncated, right? Okay. Now this becomes as an algebra finitely generated because it's everything in the truncation. Yeah. yeah. So now this is a finite algebra which contains the characteristic set. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it contains all the relevant oh. information from P. Right. Yeah. Remember, the characteristic set mm -hmm. basically determines P. Right. And then the rest of it is just uh, some indeterminate. Mm -hmm. Some indeterminates that, um, that, um, that would be just polynomial. And then it gets. So it's really just a way yeah, so, uh, so that's why you need irreducibility? Well, yeah, because you want P to be prime, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's really what you need. Yeah. To do, so I want P to be prime. Yeah, you can't do it component-wise or something like you that. Can, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can do it component-wise. Right? But, but, but the problem is that uh, in, the, in the condition, yeah. so I need these guys to be reducible, because if I have I a smooth know. point oh, or something right. not reducible, then there's going to be a smooth point in one of the components. Yeah, right. right. But you don't get the denseness get to the all components, mm -hmm. just to that component. Mm -hmm. So this is why you require the reducibility. Right. Okay. So any, any other questions? If not, let us uh, thank. There are, but... Um, <laughs> let's thank Omar. We can discuss yeah, more. Yeah, we can talk.